You could say this African penguin chick has hatched into an environment that is quite different from what nature intended. There's no sandy burrow, the beach is far away, and its parents could be anywhere, lost, injured, or perhaps even dead. Meet Sid. So Sid is actually our first hatchling of the year. Um, it, uh, his penguin number is number 25, so the 25th penguin at Sandcob. He hatched at 64 grams, which is a good, good weight for a little hatchling. Sid is being cared for by the chick rearing unit at Sandcob in Cape Town, fondly referred to as the hatchery, where penguin chicks are nurtured until they are ready to be released back into the wild. So he is about 300 grams now. We've, he's about two and a half weeks old, so he's picking up weight really, really well. Um, beautiful appetite, and that's really what I want in a chick, so he's doing really well. Although for now, it's all confusion and hunger for this little penguin, if he can be reintroduced into the wild, he will play a vital role in helping bolster the African penguin population, now listed as endangered. Once extremely numerous, the African penguin, also known as the black-footed penguin, is the only penguin species breeding on the African continent. These flightless birds play an integral role in the coastal ecosystem, but population numbers have been declining due to a combination of threats. And in 2010, the species was reclassified on the IUCN red list from vulnerable to endangered. San Cobb in Cape Town is at the forefront of saving African penguins and other seabirds, such as cormorants, gannets, and even this little rockhopper penguin who's aptly named Rocky. The primary objective is to conserve seabird populations through rehabilitation and rescue of ill, oiled, injured, or abandoned seabirds. Nikki Stander oversees the rehabilitation process. Currently, there's about 39% of African penguin breeding pairs in the Western Cape, and there's about 43% in the Eastern Cape, and about 18% of the Namibian coastline. And we work closely with the colony managers to ensure that if there are birds that need our care, they can either bring them here to the Table View facility or the Cape St. Francis facility in the Eastern Cape. A lot of the birds that we admit at the moment are what we call the Christmas chicks. So um, during November, December and January, we admit almost 600 uh, chicks that have been abandoned. So that makes up the bulk of, of our admissions. But the rest of the, of the African penguins, they would come in for either trauma or um, fatigue or other uh, infectious diseases as well. Some eggs are abandoned by the parents. When an adult penguin cannot find enough food, sustains an injury or gets oiled in a spill, it will be forced to abandon its eggs. With numbers currently as low as 40,000 birds in the wild, compared to a healthy population of approximately 1.5 million just 100 years ago, conservationists are working tirelessly to try and save the species. They employ intervention methods such as monitoring population trends, hand rearing and releasing abandoned chicks, establishing artificial nests, and proclaiming marine reserves in which fishing is prohibited. One such reserve is Boulders Beach in Simonstown, which began with just two breeding pairs in 1982 and is now home to a vital penguin colony in the Western Cape. This colony falls under the protection of sand parks. I always say it's, it's very incredible for us to have the penguin population inside the Table Mountain National Park. They have chosen to be here, they are they're doing uh, pretty well and they need to be protected. They need quite a few interventions to make sure that this population is protected. And as a national park, we have the means to put those resources in place. Monique Ruthenberg manages a team of rangers who monitor penguins in the area. So they do patrols and they actively look at the health of the bird. They look at uh, birds, have they been injured? Have they got anything around their feet, around their flippers? But sometimes they're actually ill from a disease. And then we make contact with Sankop. So when a bird comes into the centre, they typically go into admissions where they're admitted and they're given a full uh, physical exam by a veterinarian. Um, depending on what's wrong with them, they'll go into ICU for a few days uh, where they'll receive medication and full-time care from a staff member. Nesting usually peaks from March to May in South Africa. A clutch of two eggs is laid and incubation is undertaken by both parents for a duration of about 40 days. 
but penguins are at risk when they choose nesting sites outside of the safety of the colony. Rangers can remove chicks or eggs found in dangerous locations and send them through to the chick rearing unit at San Cobb. So when the eggs are brought to San Cobb, uh, I'm usually notified when they are on their way from Boulder, so I can just have a little bit of time to prepare the incubators and get everything ready for them. Um, so once they come in here, we give them an egg number, starting every year from egg number one. We're sitting at um, about eight eggs already coming in from Boulders. Sid, along with Romy's other hatchlings, are destined to be released into the colony as soon as they are old enough and strong enough to make it on their own in the wild. The population at Boulder has been stable now for about three years. Uh, we had uh, quite a scare uh, between 2005 and 2009 when our population dropped by about 30 percent. But at this point in time we have seen increases in numbers. Our numbers are currently standing at approximately 3,078 penguins and the reason why we know it is we do an annual count with the Department of Environmental Affairs. This makes the controlled environment of Bodo's an ideal location for the release of rehabilitated and rescued penguins. But first, the birds must meet the correct health criteria. So one of the criteria for release is that the bird has to be waterproof because it has to spend a lot of time in the sea. If they're not, unfortunately, then they have to stay behind for a week or two, in, in which time we'll swim them more and maybe give them some supplements to make sure that their feathers are improved. The other thing is the weight criteria. So the blues, these guys here, they need to be 2.6 kilograms at least, and the adults need to be 2.8 kilograms. Once fit and healthy, the penguins will be able to hunt for fish and feed themselves in the wild. However, before release, blood results must also be analyzed. When we artificially rear a bird and we're putting it back into the wild, we want to make sure that we're not releasing that bird with any sort of disease or parasite that it might be able to spread to birds in the wild. But we also want to make sure that it's also not going to be susceptible to any diseases that there are in the wild. Sandcob are also renowned for their oiled wildlife response. An experienced team will quickly respond to any oil spill disasters that can have a devastating effect on seabirds. One of the biggest uh, factors about oil is that it sticks to the feathers and removes that waterproofing. So the birds basically can't swim, they can't go and get food to eat, they, they can drown, burns their eyes, burns their intestinal tract. Um, so it's very important that we get that oil off. And the actual technique of getting the oil off, you can, you can just imagine how hard that is. Fifty Fifty was at Boulders to witness the recent release of seven penguins. Each one of those birds, with the population being in so much trouble, each one of those birds is important and we have to try and protect each and every one of them. And it's a really a great joy to see them being released and going back into the, into the wild. Six juveniles and one adult were due for release following their extensive rehab at Sandcob. The birds are carefully carried in individual boxes to where they will be released just a short scramble away from the sea. Down the sand dune and onto the beach, the big moment has now arrived. The birds emerge into the bright sunlight, disorientated and slightly bewildered by their new sandy surroundings. Each penguin marked with a pink dot to identify it as a recently released bird. The youngsters follow the only adult in the group towards the sea. Over a few rocks, whoops, that was deliberate, it was deliberate. Negotiate a few local bullies. Ouch, pick on someone your own size. Ah, finally, the cool waters and freedom to enjoy a leisurely swim. Yes, I think it's probably one of the most satisfying things about working at Sandcob is that uh, we as the staff get to enjoy uh, seeing the birds going back into the wild. All that hard work's paid off, so it's absolutely amazing. You know, it's always a, a good day when you can save a bird to get it back to where it needs to be to form part of the population again and contribute to a population, especially a species like the African penguin. 
the population of African penguins has declined to the point where it is estimated that its current size is a mere 10% of what it was at the turn of the 20th century. The likes of young Sid and the next generation of penguins are crucial for the survival of the species.